Imagine if the world was a video game and every animal, bug, and human variation was a faction. How would the tier list look? How would the meta be built? How would the insect faction square up against each other? Today, we're gonna find out. Oh, oh, we got good editing? Oh yeah, we do. I love TSD's videos. GG easy. Wait, he still has a health point left. I don't understand. It says he's- Oh no, he killed the Huntsman Spider. Nice! But he also fell off the map, so that's not really a play of the game, to be honest. Insects are one of the most broken factions the game has ever seen. Nowhere else in nature will you find such an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only- These are gross. These things eat their partners when they are, like, when they have sex, they, they have kids and then they eat their partners. They bite their heads off. I'm pretty sure that's the mantis. Overpowered, it's disgusting. extremely unique. It's tough to even know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group, because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual abilities are overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely OP when used in combination with one another. You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes and history. I like how this tier list is shipped as an F. That shows us that insects in general are F tier. When it comes to the overall, outside game that we all play, the real life video game, humans are obviously the top tier. I wish they would release a patch that allows you to save and reset them. Insects were added to the oh, game during dude, the setting is fantastic. expansion. The devs bumped up the atmospheric oxygen level, which allowed members of the arthropod faction to adopt larger sizes and more costly abilities. And while most He's doing of no damage, man. Base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, a small offshoot of the crust- Dude! I didn't know you could do that! That's a crazy strat! That's probably a speedrun strat, honestly. Asian player base opted to forego the gigantism trait and instead used this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game, flight. Because these new creatures were the very first to gain the ability to fly, the air became entirely their domain for the time being, and would remain that way until reptiles unlocked the ability several expansions later. In yeah, the problem with that is that you get early beta access to some new features if you pay uh, an extortionate amount. Of course, they pay the extortionate amount of not being able to be big and they remain small and pathetic. But they also only got the beta feature of flying, which means they can't go that high. They have really frail wings, frail bodies. So I don't know if it was Sex worth it, to be honest. extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads. In fact, they're so diverse that it's impossible to include them all in a single video. I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, but truth be told, many of the groups I'll be discussing today have so many standout members that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. Dude, the Scarab, oh, I don't know if it's, it's, I think it's a beetle actually, it's not Scarab. It's reminding me of the Scarab from The Mummy and the scene where the guy falls over and the Scarabs like run all over and they crawl in their skin and, and oh, I hate that scene in The Mummy where the thing, they so crawls into the guy's skin. So action. gross and uncomfortable. A few common I have a massive fear of that. Being members of the arthropod faction, all insects are are granted the exoskeletal armor perk, which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player levels up. This makes insects oh, shell smash on average, allowing them to excel in combat. The ins <laughs> Imagine a cat losing to one of those little mantises. That's hilarious. Also, do they actually have irises? I've, I thought they just had the scaled, the hexagonal eyes. I didn't know they had irises this is weird build also has access to the compound eyes perk which grants them vastly improved awareness compared to other arthropods like actually in pokemon compound eyes increases your accuracy for specific moves that do not have 100 percent accuracy it doesn't grant you an awareness i mean you could technically say and argue that it's the same thing but um i don't think it really Orpines is centipedes with 360 degree vision their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is far superior to most other flyers. This enhanced perception perk is important because insects tend to have naturally high stealth. So in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. At the bottom of the silver fish? Why would you name a bug after a fish? List, we have the silver fish. The silver fish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. 
it kind of blurs the line between what is and is not considered an insect, and not in a good way. Unlike other flightless insects, which decided to respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined strategies, the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. Aside from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. They do not have wings and have essentially no combat abilities. So you're saying that like early access players, they get in at the beginning and then they get vastly outweighed by the power creep of new DLC characters that gets added later because they need to continue to make money on the game. So they add new, shinier and better characters so that you will buy into that. And you just realize that your race becomes completely outweighed and outdone by the ones that come later because they need to make money, obviously, because you need power creep. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, with their only useful stat being their decently high movement. How are they still around? Their special ability allows them to gain XP from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning oh, they can farm XP from yummy. structures, which normally don't grant any experience. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak combatants, they tend to actually stick to urban areas, feeding on things like paper <laughs> and cloth in the relative safety of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Even there, bro, bro was like eating the Russian Bible there. What the hell was that? Be safe though. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities. Oh no! I thought you could get away there. The only insect build I believe deserves an F tier ranking. Most insects That's pretty are bad. quite viable, and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. First in D tier, we have the Phasmid build. I includes love these sticks, guys. Leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire- This is what you call a stealth level 100. I don't like bugs in general. I, I, I'm just not a fan. I just don't like the way that they move. I don't like the way that they look at me. I don't like the way that their antlers go like that. But this, this stick bug thing, that's Fire cool. Game. Second only to color changing builds like the octopus and chameleon. Whoa, that's impressive. As impressive Whoa! As are, though, the question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? Because with the exception of insects, which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposomatic coloration strategy, insects as a whole already have an above average stealth and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. They're basically these min max. So far, while they're near undetectable while remaining motionless, walking sticks still need to move to find food. And while they do mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this certainly isn't perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught That's in an really cool. where <gasps> camouflage Stick doesn't bug. match as well, their instincts to sway and move can actually end up giving their position away even more rather than aiding in their attempts to hunt. Some so what we're saying is they have minimized all their other stats just so they can maximize into stealth, but unfortunately there is a bug in the game that makes you move a little bit unnaturally, which is giving you away. Unfortunately, they haven't patched that since the beginning, since the very first release of the stick box that's really brought them down. The developers need to get on that. It's really disgusting how much that they have left this race by the wayside. Phasmids do possess chemical defenses, but as we'll see further up the tier list, this attack is quite mild. Chemical warfare has been banned, man. You can't be doing that. Pack. Geneva Convention, Phasmids bro. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloth. Sloth. Complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. Although at least Phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Bro, they live in trees. Why can't they just do it from the tree? <laughs> It'd be like an airstrike, except natural. Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. At first glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat. Is it just me or are moths the most L tier? bug of them all. They seem to just want to die. They're ugly, so they're not, they're not loved by humans. They have this gross dust everywhere that makes them dislike them more. And they just like fly into flame. They just fly into fire constantly. And they fly into things constantly that just makes them die. They have no self-preservation protocols whatsoever. With extremely squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Mots are not cute. Many of the larval forms of these- They have zero defense as well. percent defenseless and have a mobility stat in the single digits literally the freest kills in the game. However, the Leopard player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars and adult Leopards alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in and some designed to intimidate. Oh, Rams it looks like a snake. That's really cool, actually. Hold up against high intelligence builds, but it does help. Bro said high intelligence build and showed a <laughs> just a dumbest looking bird I've ever seen in my Caterpillars life. Caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses like spines and tox, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, 
Even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. No, I would say the fly is definitely the best mobility and also the best reflexes. Like, if you're going to slap a, a butterfly, like, you're just gonna get it. You're gonna get it every time. They're not fast enough. You go to, like, slap a fly, like a house fly, it's so hard to get them sometimes. They're really fast. So, they need to spec more into that. I think if they had that, they speed. They increase their speed, their aerodynamicism, and their reflexes. That'd be, like, a top-tier build, because people also want to keep them alive. So, you got the other player base of humans that are kind of hard carrying them a little bit. This enables them to avoid yeah, I quite gotten that yet. areas of the map and reach higher quality loot that might be too rare for most players to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable for a variety of stealth or intimidation purposes, also just make them look much larger than insects of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, leopards still take- Also, butterflies do have zero attack. Your insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against, so they're definitely a below average fact. That's actually it for D tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively successful faction and are gonna be concentrated in the higher tiers. I'm curious, I don't know any STL insects. The cockroach. The cockroach is the ultimate survivor, which opted to spec into a- Oh, is it really C tier though? I mean, they can live anywhere. They can live in the crevices, they can live near humans, and they're pretty hard to kill by humans as well. You need to get a full guy out to kill them. And also they survive nuclear apocalypses. And cockroaches are like the only thing that survive nuclear apocalypses. Mobility, That's stealth, really good. multitude of elemental resistances in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, they do have zero attack. Allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy. Oh, I don't fires, like the zoom in. But they do have an above average ground movement speed, enabling them to quickly scurry to cover if they see a predator player approaching. However, when caught out in the open or backed into a corner, they're fairly helpless and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire insect faction. See, I don't think that they need to spec into any attack because clearly they're not gonna have enough attack for it to do any meaningful thing anyway. What they need to do is they need to increase their speed because when you see them, cockroaches are easy to kill. You just fire a predator missile at them, they're done. But they have such good defenses. If they had good speed as well, then they could just get away from the situation really easily, crawl back into the crevices that they're so good at. That's what they need to focus they're on. They're also somewhat carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them. Because really, as impressive as their toxin and radiation resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans unlocking the fire control level ability. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Next, oh, I hate these things. The earwig, a fearsome looking general. Something is so weird about their little clippers at, in the, on their ass. They are way too big. You don't know what you're doing with this. They're not gonna be latching on to anything. It's just so weird and unnatural. They can break so easily too. They look really flimsy. Which appears to have a giant pair of mandibles on its rear end called Cersei. As fearsome Cersei Lannister, as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. As menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. Seriously, that, that attack stat, it's just all design. It's all bark, no bite, all design, they have nothing going for them. I wonder why they're even in C tier, to be honest. This sounds like an F tier mon. And even be, uh, it's it's like without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching an earwig and can attack without restraint. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the earwig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. And I'll balk, no bite. is due, the forceps are actually fairly decent in matchups against soft-bodied insects and allow the earwig to carry their targets much better than they could with their jaws. It's like carrying around a pair of scissors, except everybody else has guns. Yeah, okay, you could do some damage with it, but you're not gonna, and are you? It may seem silly to have opted for rear-facing weapons instead of the more typical forward-facing ones, like mandibles and rostrums. The position does actually serve a purpose, in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces, where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, Cersei might be some of the most unorthodox, which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid-tier, earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat display. How did they have such high quality footage of earwigs just hanging out? 
Well, who does? Who films? That just came to mind. There's someone that just sits there with like a 4K camera and just points it at some earwigs while they just kind of hang around. What, what, who do does well this? Spec into some sort of ven I do? You, 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 what? I get paid for that. Oh, uh, oh, all right. Venom infused stings are a fairly common attribute for insects. So this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So while certainly a viable mid tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. Crickets. Here we've got the Orthopterans. I can't believe crickets are still around. I can't believe they haven't been exterminated by the humans yet, just for being annoying and loud. Including grasshoppers, crickets, and katydids. These are the first mobility-centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial hind legs rather than their wings. I always thought crickets are green. Is an excellent defensive ability as it allows the user to get out of reach of. <laughs> He's like, bro, what are you doing? Hey, hey, come on. What you want to start? You start something. Start something, come on, mate. You wanna, you wanna go, do you? Do you, mate? Let's go. It's range. Come on. Now, this utility is lessened if their ability to get airborne has too much startup lag. And so instead of using their wings to get themselves up into the air, a powerful jump enables the Arthopteran mains to escape vertically at instant speed. Their excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. You ever been in a theater before and they have the villain come in and it's like children's play. So we'll have the hero standing at the front and then the villain comes in. And they have all the kids say, he's behind you. And he's like, whoa, oh, he's behind, oh, he's behind me. That's this situation. And because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an orthopteran can feel near impossible at times. <laughs> Bro, wow, that was impressive. And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, their powerful hind legs can function as quite an effective combo break. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal, meaning that oh. if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape. Crickets go harder than I thought they would. Also, do. these things are terrifying. This is probably the scariest bug. If we're not counting spiders, which we don't count because they're not bugs, they're anthro something. These are the scariest. They just look scary. Prey mantis, ah. terrifying. With that said, I think there are a few flaws in their strategy, which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner to the flying fish, using such a drastic escape option can sometimes end up putting you in a worse position than you were before. Grasshoppers are just beta crickets though. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players. And although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks and can either tank the damage outright or one hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. Mantises have got to be S tier. There's no way that they are below A. At the bottom of B tier, we have the Hemipterans, a diverse order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield shaped. However, the most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a- Oh no, there's gonna be mosquitoes in A tier, aren't piercing they? Piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access, like the energy-dense sap inside trees and stems. That is a good way to grind, but I have to say, it's a really boring way to grind. You just sit on the tree all day and you just like farm experience. It's not fun, there's no interactivity, there's no gameplay, the developers, the developers need to patch this because it's, it's broken, but it's not a fun way to or play the, the game. the starch inside of seeds. However, there are some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility, making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention to simply dodge the attacks and flee. Some do break this trend though, and opt for both better camouflage and just kill a frog? aquatic mobility. No, from the most fearsome aquatic oh growth in the game. Oh my god. On the herbivore side of things, Hemipterans tend to fare a bit worse. They usually still have fairly low mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impenetrable as How did you the kill a frog? List. They tend to rely on a chemical defense no, not similar the puppy. to some phasmids, which is where they get the name stink bugs from. However, similar to phasmids, these defenses also yeah. tend to be a bit lacking and often fail to deter attackers. So certainly a group with some standout members and fine for- Is there a spider tier list? Cause there's so many different variations of spiders. He's got to have done one of those, surely. But still nothing too broken. And topping off B tier, we have the Neuroptera, 
a rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking base stats. Genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. However, looking Wait, these at the final form of this build paints a highly misleading picture of its capabilities. How are these so high? Dragonflies are D tier. Surely they're not that good. I mean, they're fast. Is that the only thing they have going for them? They're fast? And there's all these different types of flies. Are they going to be high tier as well? Oh god, they're not going to have Botfly on this, is there? There's nothing that's scarred me more than seeing what Botfly larva do when they're born. The larval form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. Wait, so it gets weaker as it grows? This is weird. It's like Trapan Trapinch starts with 100 attack and evolves into Flygon that has 100 attack. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Antlions have a devastating venomous bite, which they use to one-shot unsuspecting players before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Oh, it's a stall build. Oh, cringe, man. I mean, listen, I don't like it when stall builds are really strong because it makes the game slow and it makes it really aggravating to play. I think they should nerf it a little bit. If you're not gonna nerf the defense, at least nerf the recovery because you just get way too much back in that. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush play style unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the prey gets caught in their trap, the antlion this is cool. the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target. Ah, oh, damn, he's that was good. Impossibility. I have an entire video dedicated to the overpowered abilities of Neuropter and Larva, but in short, they are what the Earwig pretends to be. If you took the Earwig Cersei, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have an ant line. Oh, so it's just another case of power creep, isn't it? You give it more defense, you give it better offense, all of a sudden, the previous builds are completely pointless. Oh, and what? It was paid DLC? Wow, what a shocker. So, why the weak adult form? Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find each other and complete the mating quest line. They don't... They can't eat? That seems like a bit of an evolutionary L. How did they not fix that? What a weird bug. That's what I'm saying. The problem is this thing doesn't have an end game. They put all of the points into making it more annoying to play against during the main story, and then they just ruin the end game. This build only exists to annoy other story players. Something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. What is this Pokemon X and Y? Because there's no post game. There's the Mantis! The eight here, we have a personal I, favorite. I really the thought Mantis. the Mantis would be S tier. Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle, consisting of slashing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. I'm gonna guess that the drawbacks are the long, fadangly limbs make it hard to get around, and also a lot harder to uh, stay hidden because they are so large and so fadangly and lanky. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has their base stats stat, are insane to that of a walking stick, which it desperately needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed, they easily make up for with strike speed. The Mantis' strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to hit targets that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. And there's this really weird thing about getting to the end of the main story as a male prey Mantis, because you don't even get to experience any post-game because you die at the end of the main story. Shit, that was spoilers. I'm so sorry, that was spoilers. As powerful oh, as these strikes I'm are, sorry. one weakness of the strategy is that the grappling attack doesn't immobilize the target, and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis's large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, attacking a venomous target can end up being a serious blunder for a Mantis player. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, but not one that's so invincible that Mantis mains can get careless. Are we are we counting flies in this and hornets and wasps? I mean, they're all gonna be like top tier. Wasps have a massive community. They have insane stats, they have insane speed. They just have so much going for them. Oh, there's the flies. I knew it, I knew it. The flies. Bro, why do flies always look like they're trying to plan something? 
There's the bot fly! Oh, I hate those things so much. They are disgusting. This does get a bit confusing due to the amount of other builds that use the word fly in their name. But this group, the true flies, I hate are defined these. by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. Fly players are the fedora wearers that never leave their mother's basement. This might seem like a major trade-off, but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return is more than worth the risk. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for haltiers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and also enables predator fly variants, such as the robber fly, to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight, and take down targets that would normally be too powerful to confront head-on, but are unable to effectively counterattack during flight. However, they made these most so overpowered. Scavengers or Flingo. Parasites. Using their quick mobility and superior reaction speed, to weave past the defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely Bro, that thing is so speed, slow. No denying that they That's make such a the long most neck. of the time they do have and are one of the most efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. Oh, no but dinner for you, sorry mate. Excellent aerial combatants. They're no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. Hornets? What? Dragonfly Dragonflies? Is similar to the crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. Wow, that's impressive. I had no idea. I thought this would be a low tier build. It's what the heck? It's such an efficient build that across several balance patches and game expansions, the Dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They simply aren't necessary as the Dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs throw at it. Wow, so what impressive. Is it about the Dragonfly that has given it such a competitive edge? Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, and the highest- That is true, they can turn on a dime. Insect. Unlike most insects, Dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently of each other, which grants them the ability to move in any direction without needing to turn and face that direction. I really like the Dragonfly build because it has a high skill ceiling. For the really good players that have good mechanical ability, and it's not too overpowered, it's not too annoying, it's just perfectly made. All other builds should be based off of this, because it, this was a really well done build. Meaning they can strafe mid-flight and even fly backwards. This ability makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. So this is a high commitment, high reward playstyle. In order to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility, dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the best vision of any arthropod. Extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire head, granting them full 360 They see vision. in 1080p. This allows them to track all potential targets around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. <laughs> Unlike many of the other builds on this oh, list, frog. which either have a powerful larval form but a weak adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable early game. That is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh god, is that a botfly lava? No, it's not, because the botfly larvas are inside of people's skins. Oh, I hate them so much. The dragonfly is a high tier predator in both forms. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game able to one-shot similarly sized fish and amphibian players. Now, while it was tempting to put dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. While they are generally able to see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly good at avoiding accidentally flying into dangerous situations. See, that's just a skill issue though. That can be easily fixed by just being better at the game. Also, does that mean that mosquitoes are gonna be S tier and that hornets are gonna be S tier They're as well? They're easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air. That's my prediction now. If I get that right, I'd be really impressed with myself. In addition, dragonflies cannot walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. They can't Not walk? That devastating of a weakness, but it's what? enough that this ancient build can't quite break into S tier. Beetles! Here we have oh, beetle. I love beetles, that's so the fun. beetle is the epitome of the insect build. A bunch of extraordinarily powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function Let's properly go! when used in conjunction with each other. I love yet beetles. Somehow actually end up synergizing unbelievably well. Beetles are the premier tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive ants without taking any damage. Oh, ants! I forgot about ants. We haven't seen ants yet. So are we are we putting mosquitoes in this? Is it gonna be beetles, ants, and hornets? A hornet can be on this? Something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. 
That armor is insane. Now, typically when a build is heavily invested into defenses like this, they're so slow though. It has to make a lot of sacrifices in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build. I think the beetle is the most aesthetically pleasing bug as, as well. In addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels in several other metrics. The most obvious of which is its power stat. Beetles can obliterate their enemies in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to bulldoze opponents with their forward facing weaponry is hard to overstate, but in my Oh, he just killed his friend. He said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, old friend. And then just plowed him off the side. Comes from beetles which possess the oh, what ability the to blast their attackers with a toxic or acidic chemical burst. Oh, when did this update drop? I didn't know that they had toxic abilities now. I thought it was just physical. I thought they just had insane attack and defense. They gave them they gave them ranged as well. That's insane. But that's not that's where so the good. stops because although you'd probably expect a high power tank to be a slow lumbering build, beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. And if that weren't enough, despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, oh, look at him go! full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor and strapped with enough muscle to move objects far, far above their weight class, Whoa. The beetle is still able to fly without much issue. Now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor. So they, they got no mobility when they're flying. Aerobatics that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point B via flight is still extremely valuable, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. I'm just going to say, beetles are the protagonists of the bug factions in, in the short, game. In short, beetles have essentially every ability they could ask for. <laughs> An amalgamation of everything that makes the insect faction so powerful. And so it's no surprise that beetle species comprise a whopping 25% of all species in the game. Damn. So versatile and I told you the protagonist. That a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful abilities are scorpions is, bugs? Ultimately, the beetle is still lacking the most no, powerful right? insect ability of them all, eusociality. Now, I have an entire video dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Okay, I mean, it's- got Wait, oh no, spoilers! Wait, I don't know what this- Oh, are they termites? Oh, what termites? Why are these so good? They're like, I guess they're just better ants, aren't they? Now, technically, termites are a variant of the cockroach build, but they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping them in with mid-tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is the longest lived insect oh. in the game. Oh my god, that's disgusting. That of a human or elephant. And it spends oh God. many decades building one of the most powerful armies the game has ever seen. These termite armies are able to construct some of the most well fortified bases in the game, giving even beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run for their money. That was made by and termites? Not only do they build incredible bases, but termites literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's ability to gather resources. They will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. This efficiency allows them to support a huge army and command vast territories. Termites, despite being most closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which if you've seen my snake tier list, I would say the termites are better than ants, but there's some really powerful ant builds out there. There are some that even cripple humans, just, just from a, a bite from one ant. You'd know is They're also insanely a good. tier build. Termites can accurately- <laughs> Termites are Minecraft players. <laughs> ...fire acid from a needle-like horn on their face, dealing heavy damage to anything caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws instead of acid sprayers on their head, and are crucial for defending their face from an onslaught of invaders. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, oh God. they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. What are those? Not usually are those ants? As termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation, which covers the weak points of individual members. Oh, termites are the Greeks. I got so, it. So certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to- Okay, I mean, it's gotta be wasps, right? It has to be wasps. Other eusocial insect faction. Wasps. Ants, bees, and wasps? What? No, no, no. Okay, I don't agree with this. I don't agree that bees should be the same point as wasps. Bees are almost extinct. They've taken the biggest L of the century, but that's mostly because of humans, to be honest. People have stopped playing bees almost entirely. It's almost a completely dead faction. Wasps, however, are insane. Hymenoptera is the group of insects that includes ants, bees, and wasps. 
I guess you have to include the whole section, but can we just acknowledge that bees aren't anywhere near as strong as they used to be? These insects are a bit more well-rounded, having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and rear-facing weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong jaws and a venomous stinger. The wasp's signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. You yeah, the disguise ability is kind of weak though, let's be honest. Social hymenopterans can build extremely complicated structures without the use of tools. They can Bugs launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. They can capture prisoners, cross major barriers, and control territory to an absolutely incredible that's crazy that ants can capture prisoners and bees. They can just take like the queen from another colony and just be like, this is our slave now. You better not say anything or she gets incredible degree. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are masters of both empire- Ants and bees are the ultimate communism build. Building and military tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in their own territory. Individually, they're not that great, but when you get like a massive conglomerate of them, they are stronger than anyone else. They get a passive buff, when around others of the same faction as it, but the buff compounds. So it's a massive, huge buff when you get enough players. So while beetles may take up a large- They do have monarchs, that is true. Variants, not not very communism. And ants both vastly outnumber any other insect build. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. In fact- I'm gonna be honest, I think they're a bit overrated. I think that people are playing them because people are playing them and that just compounds and makes people play them more. I don't think that individually they are the most fun to play. They're just playing because their friends are playing it and you have to be part of the same faction in order to uh, quest with each the other. The only genuine threats to you social players tend to be invaders disguising themselves as members of their own colony but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites weave their way into their ranks. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN. NordVPN, let's go! Latch onto your I love NordVPN. I love it when good YouTubers get a sponsor. You should use NordVPN at link. NordVPN's new NordVPN slash Tiazoo. Making sure Let's go! Good YouTubers getting a sponsor is huge. Like that, hit that like button. Trackers and intrusive ads from preying upon your browser. This it does. NordVPN added this year to their service. So really, you've heard of Nord before, which I'm sure you have if you watch YouTube. You I have. have noticed that they're constantly evolving to keep up with the meta of internet security. That's S tier. Of course, in addition to the normal benefits of having a good VPN, such as being able to access region locked content on streaming services or access region specific pricing. Go to nordvpn.com nice. slash tierzoo to get a two year plan plus four additional months. With I'm gonna go to nordvpn slash tierzoo to get a two year plan and four additional months discount. and also a huge discount. And before I do that, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm subscribed to more powers because, you know, we haven't done that yet. What's going on? And subscribe to tierzoo too. Let's go!